Welcome to the breakdown. Today we're going to be taking a look at chip bags. Yes, these delicious Doritos are going to be my example today, but what we're going to talk about is true of pretty much every chip brand. And yes, I am the kind of person who will sit and look at a bag of chips and say, hmm, why is it only half full or maybe two thirds full, depending on the kind of chips you get? Why do they do that? Are they trying to mislead us? That's a big theory a lot of people have, that they're trying to make you think you're getting more food than you really are. But it turns out there's actually some good reasons to only fill these bags half full or two thirds full and then put air in the rest of it. They actually have an industry term called slack fill that explains the reason behind that. So we're gonna dive into that. But first, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, it really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you learn something new today about chips. All right, let me get rid of these real quick. Honestly, after all these recordings, that bag of chips is probably gonna be nothing but smashed up uh, Doritos. But why do they do this? Why do they put so much air in chips and um, no matter what the brand is pretty much? The truth is it's not even air. It's actually a type of nitrogen gas that's used to keep the chips fresh. If the chip bags were full of nothing but air, they would get soggy and become stale long before they ever get to your table in your kitchen. And so they started putting nitrogen in there to fill the bags to keep the chips fresh. And that's actually why when you see the um, goodbye date, you're always like, hey, but when I open it a few days later, if I don't seal it up tight, the chips are all soggy and stale. Well, that's because the nitrogen got out, air got in, and started to make the chip sale. So it is kind of interesting to see. They, there is a very good reason to put excess air in there, but why so much air is the big question. And it turns out it's protection, just like I just did, I just dropped it. Think about all the shipping that happens. They put these um, chips crammed in cardboard boxes, they ship them out to different stores, the stores kick them around in their warehouse. If you're like a Walmart, a big one, First, they ship them to a distribution center. The distribution center ships them to the store. The store uh, staff goes, puts them on the shelf. You take them home. During that time, I mean, just in the cart and more places, it's getting crushed on and more. The excess air that puffs up the bag around the chips will perfectly help protect them from becoming nothing but a bunch of Dorito pieces, especially when you do what I do and just chuck it on the floor like I just did but it does help protect them and keep them um, as whole as possible through the shipping. So it turns out those are the two main reasons they do that, to protect the chips and to keep them fresh. If they did do that, a majority of your chips wouldn't come in anything but a stale pile of crumbs, not just because that's how it's made. But what about are you being ripped off? Are you actually getting what you paid for? And there is actually a law that was passed in the 1960s, truth and labeling is what's most commonly referred to, where you have to actually accurately disclose what's in there. And they do that by the net weight in chips. Yes, when you look at the net weight on the chips, it does take into account the air in there. That is the actual net weight of the um, chips in there, and then any extra bagging anything in, on it. Through that, they can say, hey, you get an idea of how much is actually there. Now, if you remember quite some time ago, many products, not all brands, but many brands started to shrink the amount of stuff inside their bags, make their bags a little bit smaller, so they can charge the same amount of money for less products. That isn't exclusive to chips. You see that in, for example, pudding cups and other things, especially some of the more generic brands, started to put a little bit less in each cup to offer it for the same price. Toilet paper's done this. You ever notice that it may have the same number of sheets, but it's not as wide. Yep, toilet paper companies figured out it, they get these big long rolls, they cut them up. Hey, if we make those cuts a little bit smaller, just a tiny bit, a tiny bit smaller, we can actually get a whole nother row of toilet paper off the end of this big um, thing of toilet paper before we cut into the smaller individual rolls you see at home. And that's what you see with a lot of these different brands. They shrunk them. Part of it is too, there are many different brands out there nowadays. Doritos used to have like one or two flavors, right? Now there's tons of flavors of Doritos, tons of flavors of chips and more. Store shelves haven't necessarily gotten bigger, so they need to sometimes make the bags as smaller as possible in order to fit them. I personally think there's a little less air in there than when I was a kid, 
but the air is still there and it does still serve a purpose of having a ton of protection for the bag and not even being air, being nitrogen in order to help protect the chips from going stale. Now, I bet there is still some air in those chips, but the majority of the bag is not air. If it was, we wouldn't get fresh chips. So there you go. So it actually turns out, yes, you are not getting ripped off. Yes, there is air in there. Yes, it is deliberate, but it's done to help make sure you get the best experience out of the chip bags. Unless you're like me and chucking them on the floor repeatedly. I think we're on take number six right now, but keep that in mind. So let me know, does that change your thoughts on chip bags? Uh, does it interest you to find out there's a reason behind something as small as putting air into a bag of chips? And it, how much air? And what, I'm sure there's a whole experiment lab that says, how much air actually protects the chips? How much air um, actually will keep them from going stale? What's the right percentage here we can do so that we can put as much of them in a truck, right? Too much air, you can't put as much on a truck. You have to run more trucks to get more bags to the store, which costs more money. Too little air, and you're not protecting the chips, right? Or nitrogen. I know I'm still calling it air, but it's really nitrogen. Too little, the chips are all showing up smashed, and people won't pay for them. So I'll keep that in mind. But if you're new here, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you learn something new. And if we did, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Is there something you've always wondered about, like air in a bag of chips? Leave me a comment. If you're watching my Vlogmas, because I'm releasing this in December when I'm posting some regular vlogs on this channel, and you're like, hmm, Luke, I'm pretty sure you're not actually in Michigan right now. You're supposed to be on your way to Texas. Well, I pre-recorded this, but I will be back with another Vlogmas episode tomorrow. So keep that in mind. We are keep doing it. And if you like these videos, check them out. I have a whole bunch of other videos out there. Check out my breakdown playlist where we talk about a wide range of topics. I really do appreciate your support. Well, I hope everybody has a fantastic December. If I don't see you again before the holidays, be safe. Have a great holiday season, no matter what you may celebrate. I hope you all take well care this month and have a happy new year. I'll see you all real soon. We'll talk again. I got a lot of video ideas in the works. Thank you for your support.